All right, so welcome back everybody. So for this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to play Cat Lady. Now Cat Lady is a game from Alderac Entertainment Group or AEG Games. And it's a fun little, little cat game about basically cats. In this game, we are all basically, basically um, noble cat ladies, if you will. We are renowned for having lots of cats. And in this game, it makes sense that the object of the game is to make sure that your cats are well fed and they have tons of toys to play with and stuff like that. And if you're unable to feed all of your cats, you'll get deducted victory points. So in this game of Cat Lady, we want to try to acquire victory points and the player who has the most victory points would win the game. So for instance, Blackberry here is worth three victory points at the end of the game. However, you also have to be able to feed Blackberry at the end of the game, which would be two chicken. You'd have to feed Blackberry two chicken. If you were unable to feed Blackberry at the end of the game, instead of getting three victory points for Blackberry, you would get minus two victory points. Ouch. So for every cat you have that you can't feed, you're going to get deducted two points. Ouch. Now, you obviously will want to try to collect food with that said. You'll want to try to ca collect cats, but you'll also want to try to collect food that kind of go with the cats. Now, there are three different types of food in this game. We have chicken, okay? We have tuna, and we also have milk. Now, milk isn't currently sitting out face up here, but this these cubes represent milk, and these blue cubes represent tuna, these red cubes represent chicken, and then these purple cubes represent a wild food source, which you can use basically as a substitute for any food source. But there's not very many of them. As you can see, there's not very many of those cubes at all, so they won't show up as often. Um, now, there are lots of things you can do, obviously, to... Um, earn yourself victory points. You can earn yourself victory points by obviously making sure your cats are well fed. You can also obtain victory points by collecting toys. So if you have just one toy on its own, you'll get one victory point. But then if you have two different toys, then that would be three victory points. If you have three different toys, so this would have to be different from another toy, obviously, and another toy. But um, you'd get five victory points for three. If you have four different uh, toys, you get eight points. If you have five different toys, you get 12 points. And if you have more than one of the same toy, then you can just basically create a whole nother set of toys. So let's say you had uh, three different toys in the first pile. You'd get five points for that. If you had two different toys in the second set, you'd get three points. And then let's say you had three of this particular card here in the last pile, and that's all you had left, you'd get one additional point for the last toy. So every toy you have is going to give you victory points. So that's always nice. Now, another thing there is in this game is stray cats. Now, you'll only play with three stray cats at a time, and they're never replenished. So this is the only stray cats we have. But then you get extra victory points based on obviously the type of stray cat you acquire. Now I'll talk about how you acquire them in a minute. But for instance, um, if you have Florence here, Florence is worth two points for every orange cat that you feed. So including this, you'd have to obviously feed Florence first and then obviously have to feed other orange cats. And then this would be worth a certain amount of points based on all the orange cats you fed. Hence Zeus up here, that's an orange cat for instance. So if you fed Florence, and Zeus, this would be worth two points, as uh, as is. So that's how Florence works. Penny over here. Penny is worth one point for each toy you have. So if you have a lot of toys, Penny will be worth one point for every toy you have. But make sure she's fed first. Otherwise, Penny would still be worth minus two points at the end of the game. Cow over here. You may feed cow any number of food, and she is worth two victory points for each. So if you have some leftover food, you've already fed all your cats, and you have cow, and you have a few extra food left over, you can feed her any of those food 
for two victory points for each food you feed her. So it's your, in your best interest to, not to waste food if you have cow. Now, how do you get those stray cats? Well, you have to acquire a lost cat card. You have to get two of these lost cat cards, and then when you do, you can discard two of them to either gain a victory point token, which is worth two victory points at the end of game, or you can use the two uh, lost cat cards that you have to discard them for one stray cat, hence Cal or Penny or Florence. So that's how that's going to work. So if you want to try to get one of those stray cats, you definitely want to try to acquire some lost cat cards. Um, then there are other types of cards besides all that in this game. There's also, um, let me find some, catnip. Catnip. If you have only one catnip card in your, in your hand at the end of the game, then, then it's going to be worth minus two points at the end of the game. So you need to have more than one catnip at the end of the game. If you have zero catnip, then obviously you don't lose any points at all. But if you have just one, it's minus two. But if you have two or three catnips, then for every cat you feed at the end of game, this catnip is going to be worth one point for every cat you feed. Okay, now if you have four or more catnip cards, then for every cat you feed, uh, catnip is worth, you know, two victory points. So you're going to get two victory points if you have four or more catnip. So that's awesome, right? So that's how that's going to work. Um, and then obviously there's other toys here. So there's like a yarn ball, for instance, um, another mouse toy. Then we have costumes. Costumes. You want to try to collect at least, at least one costume because at the end of the game, if you don't have any costumes at all, you're going to get minus two victory points. However, the, only the player who has the most costumes is going to get six victory points. So if you can just get yourself at least one, you don't have to worry about losing points, but it's going to be the player who has the most of these costumes that's going to get six victory points. So that's obviously another way you're going to you know, score points. And then obviously there's other toys here as well. And there's the wild, for instance. Now, spray bottles. Spray bottle is another thing that's unique to this game. And so the only other card I haven't explained is basically the spray bottle here. Now, during the course of the game, a player is going to choose either on their turn, they're going to take it. They're going to take their turn, and on their turn, they're going to decide either to take all of the cards in either a column of their choice or a row of their choice. So they can take this row, they could take this row, or this column, or this column, or this column, and they're going to get all of the cards from said column from said row. They don't get to like pick and choose. They take all of them. Okay. Then after they do that, they're going to take this cat maple. And let's say, for instance, they took this pile here. They would place it here, this cat here. And they would take all of the cards here. And then you would take the cards from the deck here and replenish cards. Now, the next player that went, they could not take any cards. They could not take this row. They could take this column because the cat is basically facing the row. But they would not be able to take this but they would not be able to take this row, but they could take this column here because the cat's going this direction. So basically the cat is going to block a player from taking the new cards that would get replenished here, but they could still take at least one because technically they could take, you know, one card from, you know, obviously one of these columns if they really wanted a new card that was replenished in this spot. Now, whenever there is a cat in the way from, t allow from allowing you to take a particular, obviously a particular row or a particular, for instance, a column, for instance, if the cat was here, for instance, if it was preventing you from taking this column and you really wanted this column, but you had a spray bottle on hand in your, in your hand, you had a spray bottle, you could discard this spray bottle to then move the cat token somewhere else of your choice. So that's, that's what spray bottles are for. That's what you're going to use spray bottles for. Um, and then whenever you, are, whenever you acquire food, you will not hold on to the food. You will instead discard the food card, gaining the corresponding food. So if I was to acquire this tuna here and this chicken, I would discard the chicken card. I would discard the tuna card, and then I would, require, I would acquire 
two tuna because it's two tuna, not one tuna. And then I would get one chicken because I took this one here. So I would get the corresponding cubes for those two food items. And I'd actually get me getting three because this one's two tuna instead of one. Now, whenever you take a, whenever you take a cat, if you ever take a cat, then you'll place the cat on the table in front of you, face up for all to see. You'll want to keep track of all the cats you're collecting anyways, and it's easier to do that if they're face up anyways, because you want to make sure you are trying to get food based on what that cat eats. So you want to try to go after food that that cat eats, so that way you can feed all your cats, right? Makes sense. And then obviously everything else is going to go into your hands. So lost car, last cat cards would go into your hand, toys would go to, into your hand, costumes would go into your hand, spray bottles, for instance, they would all go into your hand, catnip too. So the only thing that's going face up are the cats themselves. And then obviously food gets discarded. And then when you use the spray bottle and you use these lost cat cards, they get discarded, but then everything else is going to go into your hand. That's basically how you play the game. And then obviously the player who has the most points at the end of the game wins. So that's how you play Cat Lady. Now let's just kind of do a demonstration of how obviously the game is gonna work. Now normally the game would only end until you have basically used up every single card in this deck. Once all the cards are gone and you can no longer replenish cards because your deck is empty, this deck is empty, then the game would be over. And then you would start feeding your cats, obviously, the food and stuff that you acquired. So let's just do a demonstration of how the game works. Let's say, um, man, this is really hard to pass up. So let's just say I'm going to take, and the cat's not there yet, I'm going to take these three cards here. Okay, I get to keep the mouse, mouse toy for my hand, and I discard these cards here. That means I get a chicken, and I do get two, two tuna. Okay, and I get to keep those to those cubes, obviously. And then we obviously deal out more cards in its place. And then the cat's going to go here to block that row. Now, my opponent can't take this row, but he could take this column, for instance. So what would he want? Ooh, maybe this is what he'd want, because this would allow him to get two chicken and a tuna and one of these lost cat cards. So that's what he's going to do. He's going to prepare for, obviously, lots of food. So he's going to get two chicken, and he's going to get one of these tunas. Okay, and then these would get discarded, and he would keep this. And then the cat's going to go here to block that column, and then the new cards would come out. Okay. Okay, so... Man, two tuna, that is really hard to pass up. So I would then take this, obviously. And then I would play the black, the cat face up. So let's just play him face up over here uh, so you can see him. And then I discard the tuna card for two tuna because that's what I'm going to get. So I'm getting a lot of tuna. That means I need to go for cats that have tuna. And then I'll keep the spray bottle, obviously, to for my hand. Then the cat will go here. And we, we will divvy out some more cards. Okay, so now it would be player two's turn. What are they going to take? Well, they don't have any cats as of yet. And they've got lots of food. So they're going to take this row here, which will also give them a costume as well. They will take the costume, place it into their hand, and then they'll place these two cats face up on the table here. Okay. All right, and then obviously the cat is gonna go here to block this column as we replenish the cards here, like so. Oh, we finally got milk. Okay, that works, because this cat needs milk, and I'm gonna get another chicken too. So I'm gonna take this row here and play uh, Sir Cuddleface face up over there, and I get two milk and a chicken. So we'll do that. Cool, got some milk finally. All right, and then we got another milk cart that just showed up, plus a scratching post and a chicken. Okay, and then obviously the cat comes here to block this row. Okay, so then player two. Player two does need um, some meat possibly, and, and so there's meat here, and there's chicken there, and there's chicken here. 
Uh, so he's going to go for this row here, which is going to get him another costume and a chicken and a tuna. So one of each of these. And now he's got all of these. While well, I have all of these. So I've got a lot of food now. But I need more cats, obviously. Okay, so another cat gets added to the pile. Ooh, there's a wild. And the cat's going to block that column. Okay, so I think I will take the wild. So I'll take these. And I'll put these two cards to my hand. Because it's a toy and a costume. And I discard this for a wild food resource. And then that goes to the discard pile. Okay, and then the cat goes here. And you kind of get the point how the game is just gonna work basically, right? Okay, looks like another uh, last cat card has finally shown up. So, hmm. Well, he's got a lot of, he's, he needs more cats. So he's gonna take this one, this one, and this one. He's gonna get two more chicken. So that's what he'll do and discard it. And then he gets a lost cat card and he gets this one here, that cat. And he's now got two of the lost cat cards. So he can now discard these two lost cat cards to get one of the stray cats of his choice. Um, and he's got a lot of orange cats right now. So he's gonna take Florence, which is going to be, be worth extra points for all of the orange cats that he manages to feed. So he's going to place that face up, and now he's got Florence. And then the cat comes here. And then, ooh, we finally got a catnip finally showed up, but only one as of yet. Okay, well, what I think I'll do is I'll take pumpkin here and catnip and milk. And I uh, finally got a catnip, and we'll place... Uh, pumpkin face up, and we get a milk card. So we get a milk cube. Okay. And then, obviously, this column is now taken. So, hmm. All right, so now it's his turn over here. So what does he want? Um, he doesn't have a lot of tuna cats right now. Um, he doesn't have any milk at all. So what he's going to do is he's going to take this row here, which is going to get him the costumes, and it's going to get him a milk, because he doesn't have a single milk at all. So now he's going to get himself a milk. And then, look at that. Okay. So now more cats have shown up, and so on and so on. So I think what I'll do is, since I don't have... Um, a lost cat card at all. Um, I'm not going to bother with that. In fact, let's just end it here and then just kind of do a, a short scoring. So obviously, we're about halfway through the game. Almost half, okay? But we'll end it here and just kind of go over the scoring. So, um, I need to be able to feed these cats in order to obviously get the points for them. So I would need four chicken and three um, milk, okay? Well, I've got, um, unfortunately, I don't have enough chicken to feed everybody here, so um, I'm gonna feed this guy for two chicken and a milk, so he's been fed. So I would score six points for him, for Pumpkin. Um, I could feed uh, Sir Cuddleface here for two milk. And then, unfortunately, I can't feed Blackberry because I just don't have enough food. So I'd get minus two points for him, for instance. So I'd get a minus two points for Blackberry. And then I look at what I've got here. I only have uh, one catnip. So I'd get minus two points for that. So that's minus four now. And I do have at least one costume. So I don't have to worry about getting minus points for not having any costumes. And I do have two toys here. So that's going to give me three points. That almost, almost takes care of my minus points. So 
I got a total of nine points altogether. Nine points. I know this is 10, but I had to take off one more point for all the minus points I got. So I, I would have gotten nine points already for that. Obviously, you do want to finish the game completely so you can utilize all the possible food that you can possibly get. But you get the point. That's basically how that's going to work. Now, my opponent, my opponent has four costumes. So they're going to get six points for these costumes because they have the most of the costumes. So they get six points for that. Now, let's see if they can feed their cats, however, because they don't have a single toy. They just had costumes and cats. Okay, so... Uh, Zeus, Bell, Zeus and Bell require chicken, okay? So they, uh, he'd have to pay three of these, which he can, so he will. So these two cats are fed. In order to feed Florence here, he needs a chicken and a milk, which he has, so he can pay for that. So he'll pay that. And then to feed Zeus, he has to pay two of these as well which is two tuna, so he's able to pay it off. So he only had one food left over, which works out pretty well because the player who has the most food is also going to get deducted two points. So I actually did not get nine points. I got seven points because I had the most leftover food. Ouch, right? So you don't want to get too much food. You want to try to be... There's a balance in this game for sure. But obviously he was able to get... Um, Four points for Florence because he fed four cats in total. Um, so he got six, ten, eleven points plus the six for the costumes. So he got um, 17 points, I believe. So he beat me by a huge amount of points. Look at that. Awesome job. So that's basically how you play Stray Cats. And that's a rough draft version of how gameplay will work. Obviously, like I said, you're going to definitely always want to completely finish the game because playing halfway through is going to definitely cause you to lose, most likely, which obviously happened to me. So, but anyways, you know, I know, should know, understand how to play this game. If you guys liked my explanation of the game and you liked how I kind of just showed you how gameplay works... Don't forget to leave me a like, and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.